One, two, and three. Come on, put your hands together real good. Come on and bless the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We bless him because he is our risen Savior. We bless him because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We bless him 
because he is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We bless him. We, oh, yes, we do. Because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. Lord, we say thank you today. We bless you, Holy God, because of who you are. We bless you, Holy God, for what you've already done. We bless you, Holy God, for what you're doing right now in the present, which is called the gift. God, we bless you for what you're going to do in the future. I just wonder, are there any grateful people in the house of the Lord on today? That don't mind opening your mouth and saying, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you, thank you, thank you. Lord, I thank you, thank you. I dare you to reach up and say, Lord, I thank you. This is not church as usual. The presence of the Lord is already in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you. We bless you. Family, this is called to worship. If the Lord is not here, we can't do anything. We can't sing without him. We can't praise without him. We can't play without him. There is no worship without him. Lord, have your way today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Break every yoke. Yes. Destroy every chain. Set the captive free, God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. We came for an experience. We came for a touch. Somebody came for deliverance. Yes, God. Thank you. Somebody came for healing. Somebody came for joy in their souls. Somebody came for a peace of mind. Whatever it is you need, yes, God has it for you. Tell your neighbor, say, God got it, God got it, God got it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We like to welcome each and every one of you all to anointed praise and worship ministry, Church of God in Christ. Come on, give God a hand, come on, praise for the marvelous things he has done. Thank you, Jesus. Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we just honey you. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Hey, we bless your holy name, God. Thank you. God, I feel you even now stirring in this place. Lord, we thank you that yokes are being destroyed, God. Bondages are being lifted right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you that you have allowed us to travel from far and near to be in this place. And God, we are praying right now and we are expecting that we will not leave here the same way that we came. But God, we will leave here stronger. We will leave here more victorious, more confident in you and in your word. Father God, I ask right now that you will anoint the singers on tonight to sing to the glory and the honor of you. I pray right now that you will anoint the musicians, God, to play to the glory and the honor of you. Lord, I pray for every scripture, every hand clap, every foot stomp, every dance be to the glory and the honor of you in the name of Jesus. God, we come expecting an experience with you. So, Father God, I pray that you touch each and every person who is in this sanctuary and who are watching online. Lord, don't let us be the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Thanks we give. Let the church say thank God. Amen. Come on, just give God a hand and clap of praise. Come on. Give him a warm welcome if you're truly glad that the Lord is in this place. At this time, our scripture is coming from Sister Cheryl Wilson. Immediately following her would be Sister Lisa Cox with our church family. Say amen as they come. I will exalt you, my God, the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you 
and exalt your name forever and ever. God bless you. Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. How many of y'all came to bless the name of the Lord on tonight? I'm going to ask that question again. Like how many people came to bless the Lord on tonight? Y'all, it's Tuesday. Hallelujah. We thank God for a very special friend of ours, uh, Minister Keenan Coleman. We've known this young man for a few years now, and uh, we love his anointing. Uh, we love his energy, y'all. Uh, the young man off the chain, okay? He just, he just off the chain, and we thank God uh, for his anointing. And so, since tonight is our Tuesday night thunder, praise God, we thought it was in our best interest to call somebody who brings the thunder with him. Amen. We felt it was appropriate. So at this time, <laughs> my friend, Minister Keenan Coleman and company are coming. Come on, y'all, give God a hand, come on, praise. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Open up your mouth and bless God. Open your mouth and give God glory. Hallelujah. This song that says we lift up your great name. Can you clap your hands just like this?
Jesus, 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 oh my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You may not need him like I do, but I need Jesus for my God. Hallelujah. Woo, Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. Thank you, son. I... Praise him. 
Jesus. This is two of the night on the Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. I got a quick question for you. Did anybody bring your sound shoes with you tonight? I know we had them on Sunday morning, but did you bring your sound shoes with you tonight? Ask your neighbor, say, did you bring your sound shoes? Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hey. Thank you, Jesus. He brought me too far. Yes. He brought us too far. Thank you. We bless you, holy God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You all may be seated if you can. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Lord, we honor your presence tonight. We thank you for your promises. Family, as we are preparing for the ministry of giving. Oh my God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. else have a yes in your spirit right about now I know we've been singing and clapping and jumping but could you just open up your heart open up your mouth and just say yes Lord come on yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord, yes, Lord. whatever your will is your will be done for a ministry of reconciliation. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, God. 
We honor the Spirit of God in the place today. Hallelujah. When we pray, Lord, have your way, we have to allow him, come on somebody, to do what he wants to do, when he wants to do it, how he wants to do it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Hey, glory, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. As we're preparing for the ministry of giving financially, we've already been giving today. We've given of our time. Many of us have came from different places. We've given of our talents, amen. And so at this time, we're going to give of our treasures. I pray that you will fill out those envelopes. No matter what you're giving, we just like to keep excellent records, y'all. As you're filling out your envelopes, I do have a quick announcement. Uh, this Sunday, July the 18th, uh, we will not have our in-person service this Sunday, July 18th. Uh, we will be at the Holy Convocation at the Robinson Center in Little Rock. It's the 100th uh, Holy Convocation and AIM Convention combined. It's called The Gathering. And so we will be there, amen, on Sunday. For those of you who are watching from across the nation, God bless you. God bless you. Uh, we will reconvene on Sunday, July the 25th in person right here in Anointed Praise and Worship Ministries, Church of God in Christ, Pine Bluff. So please take note of that. Please let your family and friends know that we will not be here this Sunday. Amen. But we will reconvene on Sunday, July 25th. Also, uh, I want to give honor. I know they didn't ask me to, but I count it as an honor and a privilege to have uh, two pastors. Hallelujah in the house. Pastor Cooper of Tabernacle of Faith. Come on, y'all. Drop by to check on the new kid on the block. God bless you. And I thank God for my brother, Pastor Brandon Clay of the Main Street Church of God in Christ. Hallelujah. To come check in on me. Amen. Make sure I got it. It's in order. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. There are several ways in which we're able to plant our financial seeds on today. Uh, we do have Cash App. Uh, APWM Pine Bluff. I know many of you know about uh, Conway location, but we're in Pine Bluff. Amen. Amen. And they have their own things going on. Praise God. So Cash App, APWM Pine Bluff. Also, you can go to Givelify, APWM, C-O-G-I-C. It should be on your program if I talk too fast as well. Uh, Givelify, APWM, C-O-G-I-C. You're able to mail your seeds in for those who are watching online uh, to APWM, C-O-G-I-C. P.O. Box 1535 Pine Bluff, Arkansas 71613. I repeat, APWM C O G I C. P.O. Box 1535 Pine Bluff, Arkansas 71613. And for those of you who like to hear our voices, praise God, you can call our office 870 727 0061. Leave your name, your number and the amount that you desire to give and immediately following our worship experience, one of our representatives will contact you to receive your seed and you will get a receipt over the phone within 10 seconds. And for those of you who are in the house, amen, and you say, well, all I brought was my plastic money. Well, God bless you, amen, we got you covered. So on my, light, my left, which is your right, amen, you'll be able to swipe your card. Amen. And get a receipt within 10 seconds from anointed praise and worship ministry. Just please fill out the envelope so we can keep accurate records. Amen. If you're doing a check of money or to make it out to APWM, Church of God in Christ. Amen. Amen. I know I gave y'all a lot of information, but let us stand. Let us stand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us pray most graciously, Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you for the, what you have done thus far in this service. Lord, we thank you that you have given seed to the sower and bread to the hungry, God. And because you have been so great to us, God, we want to give back to you, God, to see your kingdom work continue to go forth in the spirit 
of excellence. God, I pray right now that every person that is sowing the seed, God, no matter how great, how small, God, I thank you for their sacrifices. And I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus for a 100-fold return. Somebody may be sowing for peace. Somebody may be sowing for joy, for open doors, for finances. God, whatever it may be, God, according to your will, I count it done. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And thanks we do give. Let the church say thank God and amen. You may bring your seeds to the Lord. Hallelujah. If everybody would just oblige us for a moment and point your right hand toward the basket and repeat after me. Say, in faith I give. In faith I receive. It will return unto me. And supply all of my needs. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if you believe it, just give God a hand clap of praise. Thank you, Lord. We honor and praise God for his presence today. We honor and praise God for each and every one of you God's children. Most of all, y'all, I, I thank God for my wife. Oh, my God. Thank God we're not in a haters church. Amen. But I thank God and I give honor to God for my wife of going on 18 years this October 25th. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, I know we look good. Yeah, yeah. We don't yeah, praise God, everybody. But I thank God for her, how he is brought us over, how he has kept us, how he has provided for us, how he has uh, matured us, amen, and he has helped us through two great boys, uh, my son Keandre, amen, amen, and my baby boy Christian over here on the drums, they have truly taught us how to be better parents, amen, so I thank God uh, for my boys, amen, and somebody might ask, is there a word from the Lord? And I'm going to answer that question for you. Yes, there is. Uh, my wife, Dr. Clay, was preaching before I was preaching. Amen. And if anybody hear her on the organ, she preaches while she sings. Amen. It just, it just bubbles up on the inside when she's in the house, in the presence of God. And I thought that this was the best opportunity, amen, to allow her to come and just release into the house what God has placed in her and on her life. If everyone, if y'all would just point your hand toward Dr. Clay and just say, God bless Dr. Clay. At this time, Ken and Coleman, they're going to come one more time. Amen. And the next voice that you will hear will be none other than my beautiful wife, elect lady. Amen. Dr. Kimberly Clay. God bless you. This song of worship. It's real quick. Right here. Say, My hallelujah belongs to you. Say, My hallelujah belongs to you. Let's go right here. Everybody, my hallelujah. Let me say my hallelujah. My hallelujah. 
for this day we thank you for this moment in time that we will never see again god we pray that today this moment this time is used for your glory and for your honor god i thank you for your people i thank you for who they represent in the kingdom i speak that no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper god i thank you for our gifts i thank you for our calling satan the lord rebuke you in the name of jesus we shall receive this word that you have sent for us on tonight we speak a life change on tonight somebody say lord i need a life change on tonight lord we're tired of changing our clothes and changing our shoes and changing the song on the radio but god we need a life change on tonight so god we say yes to your will we say yes to your way whatever it is that you have for us god we say that it is done we receive it in jesus's name in jesus's name and we all say amen right as you're standing really quick go ahead and get your bibles go ahead and turn to jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 4 jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 4 i honor god on uh, on today who is the head of my life I, I honor him for life for health for strength uh i honor my pastor uh pastor ml clay y'all 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 just say something uh, about the founder amen praise god i told him many years ago i said just anybody can't be my pastor you can't just be my pastor because i'm married to you you gotta show me something i gotta see the god in you and I, and he has shown me uh the god in him every day all day and i praise god for it uh jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 4 uh, say amen when you're there. Uh, we're always APWM. I honor God for APWM Church of God in Christ. I, I love y'all. I love y'all. Uh, many of us were unable to be here, but in spirit and truth, I know that the prayers of my babies are all here with me. And I praise God. I honor these pastors. I, I don't know how this happened today, y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm in front of three preachers, real preachers. Uh, so they're going to test my skill on tonight. They're not going to say anything, but they're going to test my skill on tonight. So Lord, help me through this. Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 4. If you would first... Uh, repeat after me and hold your Bible in your right hand which symbolizes blessings we're gonna speak over this word this is my Bible this is my weapon this is my life I am what it says I am say it with authority I can do what it says I can do I can have what it says I can have but according to my faith it is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 4. I'm going to read from the King James. If you would just read along with me. The word of the Lord says, The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels, and the vessel that he had made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again, another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God's word is already blessed. We just have to obey it. Amen. I honor God once again for this opportunity. Uh, thank you to these awesome musicians. Praise the Lord. 
Uh, bless you, Brother McClendon, Brother Chris. I honor God for you. Um, thank you for the music ministry, Minister Keenan Coleman and company. God bless you all. Every time y'all bless my soul. You know I be wanting to come up there and sing with you, but I, I don't get a chance. They, I'm, I don't get invited. Praise God. He'll catch that later. Uh, Jeremiah 18, 1 through 4, there are two very special people in the house, and I must acknowledge them. It is an honor to be able to help my husband in leading my parents, uh, deacon and missionary dentist. This is the honor of my life. This is the honor of my life. My mom has always been able to tell me, girl, you need to do this. You, you make sure you in order. You talk to people right. You look at them right. You dress right. Pull your dress up. Do so now, first lady gets to give some directions. Isn't this thing good how God will turn it around? What did Fred Hammond say? Late in the midnight hour, God will turn it around. But I count it as an honor to help uh, in their spiritual maturity. This is a, a transitional stage for them. And I honor God. I love y'all. I do. In so many ways, they are so supportive and we thank God for them. To my two guys, I have to say something. My dudes, Keon, Dre, and Chris, I love y'all. And baby was right. Y'all made us better parents. Y'all definitely. Because Keon, Dre, he said some choice words to you. Like, he'll tell you, mama, you made some stupid decisions, mama. You, what were you thinking? And I had to think about it myself. And like, wow, I got to get this together because people are watching me and I have to make sure that I'm on point I have to redeem myself I can't go through my whole life stuck on stupid so at this point I believe that God is doing a work and we want to talk about Jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 4 once again it says the word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying arise and go down to the potter's house and there somebody say and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it again. Somebody say, again. again. Another vessel, as seemed good to the potter to make it. In this passage of scripture, the prophet Jeremiah is sent to the potter's house to receive a word from the Lord. Has anybody ever gone somewhere to receive a word from the Lord? In this word, uh, the Lord lets us know that there are two important things that are brought out in the beginning of this passage. Arise and go. Arise and go. I will cause you to hear my word. What does that mean if he says, I will cause you to hear my word? There's something particular there. The word arise means to get up or stand up. Arise, to get up. Come on, note takers. Or stand up. Y'all know this is Dr. Clay. We are in class. Cause. To cause. He said, I will cause you to hear something, to see something. Cause means to make something happen. In Jeremiah 18, verses 1 through 4, I want to share with you briefly from the message translation. It says, God told Jeremiah, up on your feet, go to the potter's house. When you get there, I'll tell you what I have to say. So when I went to the potter's house, and sure enough, the potter was there working away at his wheel. Whenever the pot that the potter was working on turned out badly, as sometimes when you are working with clay, the potter would simply start over and use the same clay to make another pot. Did y'all hear that? Use the same clay. Somebody said use the same clay to make another pot. I want to talk for just a few moments, if I could, on the topic of stay on the potter's wheel. Can you just look at somebody across the room and, and just, just give them an encouragement? Tell them, stay on the potter's wheel. Stay on the potter's wheel. God first needed Jeremiah in a certain place where he knew that Jeremiah could receive what was being said. God was not only just going to speak, but he was going to give an illustration. God will allow us to be in a place where we can hear his voice clearly. 
God wanted to give him a revelation through what he saw. Uh, I am, y'all call me Dr. Clay, but I really haven't earned doctorate degree. Uh, I am an industrial organizational psychologist. Uh, I study the way people work together in organizations and businesses. In my studies, this is particular, um, it's proven that seeing and hearing at the same time, I talk about this a lot if you've been in any of my Family Vibes workshops, seeing and hearing at the same time will provide lasting clarity to our thoughts. So not only should I just see it, but if I hear it and then if I write it and, and I put all of these forms of communication together, it provides lasting clarity where I can process that thing. The clay vessel was marred, meaning it was impaired, it was damaged, or it was spoiled. We are clay in the hands of the Lord, and we become damaged or torn by our life circumstances. God continues to work on us, to mold us into a beautiful vessel full of his spirit and anointing. From a lump of clay, a beautiful vessel is formed. But along the way, the vessel may have issues. We have to be formed and shaped so that we are not a warped container. Not able to carry the things that God has intended for us. Have you ever been in a position where you said, I know that God has something for me. I just know it. I'm, I dream about it. I see it. But I just can't seem to get to it. Sometimes we're just a warp container and we need to allow God to do his work. Somebody say it again. Stay on the potter's wheel. God has the incontestable authority. The infallible domination the irrefutable license to form and fashion people and nations. Uh -huh. Guess what? As he sees fit. Not as we see fit. See fit. He is the authority. God is sovereign over us. Having supreme independent authority. He is self-sufficient. Thank you, Pastor. He is self-reliant. He is self-ruling. God determines our lives. Our will must be his will. God has the final say. The vessel in this passage that the, that the potter was making of clay was marred. It was spoiled. It was messed up in the potter's hand. And the potter reworked or he remolded it into another vessel as seemed good to the potter. The verses of Jeremiah 18, 1 through 4, gives us some important information to note. Come on, note takers. First, the vessel was a work in progress. Do I have any work in progress? As I have my hand up first. The vessel was a work in progress. It was not complete. Y'all, I don't care. I might bust some bubbles, but we have not yet arrived. We are not there yet. We are works in progress just as we are in progress we are not complete just like that vessel second point the vessel was in the potter's hands although spoiled it was still in the potter's hand yeah, 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 yeah. we belong to god yeah. we must stay in god's hand Amen. and stay in his will right. we are not to operate outside of the will of the lord and take a chance on missing the entire blessing of being a beautiful, complete vessel in God. Thirdly, it was remade into a vessel that the potter was pleased with. I did not see in that passage where the vessel said anything about, oh, I'm happy now, I'm complete. I, I'm, I'm happy with how I am right now. I'm good. Leave my mess alone. Don't bother me. It was a vessel that the pot, somebody say the potter was pleased. It was the vessel that the potter was pleased with. When we may happen to mess up or become marred, although loving God and seeking him, we cannot Jump off the potter's wheel just because it hurts. Somebody say it again. Stay on the potter's wheel. 
I have found out that anything worth having in this life is worth going through and fighting for. In our reading, we find that God has spoken to Jeremiah and told him in verse 2, Arise! That means get up and go down to the potter's house. And there, not at home, not over Cuckoo's house, but at the potter's house, I will cause thee. I'm going to do something. I'm going to anoint that environment. And you're going to hear what I'm saying to you, Jeremiah. Looking at verse 3, Jeremiah says, then I went down. He obeyed the word of the Lord. He obeyed the direction of the Lord. He went down to the potter's house and behold, he wrought a work on the wheels. Then he continued in verse four by saying, and the vessel that he made was marred. I keep having to say that about that mark because a lot of times we beat ourselves up and we think that we've messed ourselves up, but it's only we just need to stay on the potter's wheel. Allow God to complete his work and stop jumping off. The vessel that he made was marred. In the hand of the potter, the vessel was ruined, scarred. The vessel was stained. So he made it again, another vessel. Wash me over again. Wash me over again in your precious blood. Wash me over again. That's all we do. That's what we tell the Lord. My soul says yes. Oh, yes. Yes, my Lord. Don't go off and get mad. My soul says yes. Don't quit church. Yes. Oh, yes. To understand this, we need to know a little bit about the potter's wheel. It consists of two wheels, one large wheel and one small wheel. The wheels were on a vertical axis, so you have a big wheel at the bottom. And then you have a smaller wheel at the top, and they're connected vertically by a wooden, a wooden stick that connects a rod that connects them both. The large wheel was turned by the feet that would in turn spin the upper wheel. To us, the wheel represents the circumstances in life. Does anybody have any issues or circumstances? Yeah. These are used by God to mold the believer. But in order for there to be a work on the wheel, there were some things that the potter had to have before he could mold us. The first thing he has to have is something to mold. If we're not present, how can he mold us? Somebody say, stay on the wheel. If I'm not there, if I'm not hearing God, how can I go to the next step? If I skipped off and jumped off, how can God complete the work? So he has to have something to mold. This was the clay. Clay is basically useless when it's dug out of the ground. It's shapeless, has no purpose, is of no good, and basically no good to anyone. This is the picture of us. When we were in our depraved state, somebody said, I once was lost in sin. But that useless clay is no longer because now we're on the potter's wheel. We were sinners and like a piece of clay, we were shapeless and had no purpose. There was no beauty in our lives. Y'all, sin is hard. Sin is hard. Ducking, dodging, looking over your shoulder, trying to straighten it up for the church folks. Sin is hard. But when we're on the potter's wheel, God can do a work. The potter put us on the wheel. And we became a work on the wheel. Somebody say, I'm going to work on the wheel. And the circumstances of life started spinning us. The moment we get on that wheel, the circumstances start spinning. But there's a second thing that the potter needs. He needs a motive. There has to be a motive, a reason. We didn't end up on the potter's wheel by mistake. Nobody's even here tonight or today by mistake. There is a motive behind everything that the potter is doing. Brother, you're on that organ not by mistake. There is a reason and a purpose. When he is forming that vessel, he already has something in mind as to his will for us. He knows what kind of vessel he wants to make. Pastor Clay, he knew that he needed a pastor out of you. He knew what kind of vessel he needed. A potter doesn't sit down to make a vase and by chance make a bowl. 
Romans 8 and 29 says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. There is a perfect will of God for each and every one of us, but it is up to us to find it. Somebody say, stay on the wheel. The The third thing that the potter needs, he has a method. He needs his method. The wheel begins to spin and starts to work. That ugly piece of clay is on the wheel. The potter has kneaded it out like dough so that he could have something to work with. Sometimes people come into the church and we come in and we get saved this week and by Tuesday we backslide it because, man, I just can't do this God thing. I can't do this church thing. Man, it's too hard. I know I've been living this sin 59 years, but, man, two days of being saved, man, I've heard it all, y'all. We have to stay on that wheel and allow God to knead us, soften us up. Sometimes we've got a tough skin, and God has to soften us up. He has some water just in case the clay gets a little dry or it gets too hot. It doesn't have any form, so it's just laying there helpless. It cannot stand on its own. The potter begins to apply a little friction, causing the clay to stand upright, giving it a little power to stand on its own. As we get closer to God, as we stay in his will, as we do the things that he's commanded us to do, we get a little stronger and we get a little more power. He then, as we get a little stronger, he applies a little more pressure. Somebody say a little more pressure. This pressure was applied to get out some of the small stones and burrs that caused imperfections in the clay. So as we're spinning, as life situations are rubbing us, God is getting out those stones. Some of those things we didn't even know was in us. It's some things in us that we didn't know till it came out and we were like, oh my God, did I say that out loud? He applies some pressure. It was applied to get those imperfections out. There could be a lot of pain. There could be a lot of dissatisfaction. There could be a lot of frustration from what is happening on that wheel. But somebody say, stay on the wheel. wheel. Tell yourself, say, self, stay on the wheel. wheel. Then the potter trims the clay. He cuts all of the excess away. Just like the pruning process of a plant, the unhealthy branches are cut away. Such is the same in our process on God's will. Certain so-called friends will have to be cut off. Toxic family members cut off. Venomous or poisonous relationships cut off. Whatever is needed to complete our process On the potter's wheel, cut it off. Finally, he uses heat to purify the work. Did you notice that uh, it doesn't, the process doesn't start with the heat? Even when you're boiling a lobster or a frog, I don't eat frogs, but I just heard, Lord have mercy, that when you put them in there, you don't put them in hot water. You turn the heat up gradually so that they temper to the water so he didn't start with the heat because we would have immediately run out of the church it was too hot but he uses heat to purify to cleanse us he uses it in a man he has a method to the madness he puts it in a kiln a stove a furnace and covers it up nobody can see what's going on on the inside of the kiln 1 Peter 4 and 8, part B of the text says, For charity or love shall cover the multitude of faults. God loves us, therefore he covers us as we go through our process. Does anybody thank God that he covers? While we go through, we don't go around with our slips showing and everything that we're thinking on the inside showing on the outside. But he covers us because he knows that we're on the wheel. 
He doesn't put us out on front street as we're in the furnace. He allows us to be covered so that he ultimately gets the glory. God loves us. He wants us to be an excellent vessel to carry out his glory. It's hot in that furnace, and the vessel is being tried and tempered to see if it's worthy to be used as a vessel of honor. There have been many vessels that have gone in, but some came out bent, broken, or couldn't be used. But this time, the potter pulls the vessel out of the kiln. And to his delight, somebody say, God is pleased. He sees that piece of clay that was without shape. It was ugly and useless. Now it's shaped and it's beautiful. But he wants to see now if it's useful. So he takes it and gives it the ultimate test. Somebody say, stay on the wheel. He pours oil into it. When we come in, we don't immediately come in knowing all of our gifts. We don't immediately know our purpose in God. We don't immediately know everything that God is going to use us to do. He works on us and he works on us and he works on us. He needs us and, and, and bends us and, and, and gets us through that process where we can he can turn the heat up and we can be finished out. But he wants to know. Will we pass the test? And the test is when we start to use our gifts. He pours oil in them. That's when the gifts start coming out, Minister Coleman. That's when you start singing your best song. That's when you start writing your best praise on paper. He puts oil in the vessel to see if it's a vessel of honor. Somebody say, stay on the wheel. Can you hold what God gave you? Can you hold it and bless his name? Can you take the pain and turn it into praise? Can you take what hurt you and use it to help someone else? We must stay on the potter's wheel. This wheel, it brings maturity. The wheel brings stability. The wheel brings a sense of clarity. I know who I am and I know whose I am. If I jump off the potter's wheel before time, my life will be warped. Leaning to one side. Spiritually deformed. I'm tired of missing my breakthrough. Anybody say that? I'm tired of missing my breakthrough. Because I won't stay on the wheel. I know God has my answer. But I can't seem to stay in place long enough to get it. The potter's will is symbolic for God's will. Living in God's will is a blessing when we are aligned, amen. When we are aligned with our destiny, we begin to experience a peace, a love, and understanding like never before. God's will calls for us to live with purpose. Y'all know I talk all the time and, and I tell y'all don't just do stuff to be doing it. Have a purpose as to why you're doing it. If you're going to say something, say it because it has a purpose. If you're going to do something, do it because it has a purpose. If you're going to start a business, start it for a purpose. When we are not living in God's will, we are following our own will. The problem with our will is that the end result will always lead to death. But by nature, we are filled with sin. And sin breeds destruction. Am I right, Pastor? Sin will never produce righteousness. And we will never feel complete. Our spirits yearn to follow the will of God. But the sin within us seeks to follow the flesh. This back and forth battle of our will versus the will of God. It can be confusing and difficult to manage in our minds. It takes discipline. It takes obedience and an open mind to choose to follow the will of God. But with the right attitude, it is possible. Somebody say, stay on the wheel. Isaiah 64 and 8 says, But now, O Lord, thou art our father. We are the clay and thou our potter. And we are the work of thy hand. The question for you this evening is, 
Have you become a broken or a bent vessel? Think about that just for a moment. Have you become a broken or a bent vessel? You don't have to say it out loud. You don't have to raise your hand. But think about it for a moment because God is here to heal and deliver us on tonight. Are you able to hold on anymore? A lot of times we're on fire. We're really excited and, and about doing God's will and doing everything right. Like Pastor said, we don't even want to step on an ant or a roach when we get first get saved. Everything, we just want to be holy. We want to be right. But are we holding our oil? Have we become marred in the potter's hand? If we hesitate or question ourselves, do yourself, your church, and more than anything, God a favor and stay on the wheel. Somebody say stay on the wheel. Stay on the potter's wheel. Stay, remain, be still. And know that he is God. He knows all. He sees all. He knows what we have need of before we even ask. Stay on that wheel and allow God to do a mighty work in and through you. Don't get tired and say, I can't take this anymore. Don't get tired and say, I can't do this anymore. Don't get tired and say, Lord, take me off. But say, Lord, I will stay on this wheel. You can stay. I will do this. Somebody say, I will do this. And I'm going to do it God's way. I'm going to stay on the wheel and I'm gonna, not going to try to spin the wheel myself. But God, I'm going to let you turn me. I'm going to let you turn me. I'm going to let you shape me. I'm going to let you mold me. I'm going to let you do whatever you want to do in my life. God, I know that I'm a work of yours. I'm your handiwork. And God, I choose to stay on the wheel. I'm going to get my full anointing. I'm going to get my full blessing. I'm going to get my full healing. I want my deliverance. Does anybody want your deliverance tonight? Just lift your hands and say, Lord, I want my deliverance. I'm going to stay on the wheel. Whatever you have me to do, whatever you have me to say, my soul says yes. Lord, my soul says yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. I won't jump off, God. Just because it gets hot in the furnace, I won't get out, God. I'll let you do your work in me. If I need to close my mouth, I'll hush for you, God. If I need to speak a word, I'll speak a word for you, God. If you tell me to sing a song down on Main Street, I'll do it because you told me to do it, God. I will get my deliverance. I will get my blessing. There are so many things that God has promised us. And we're right at the edge. We're right there at the edge waiting. Waiting. And sometimes we just say, Lord, I give up. I can't do it anymore. But somebody say, stay on the wheel. I want my deliverance. I want what God has for me. Here in, in, in this word, Jeremiah was told to go somewhere and to do something. He was told to go somewhere and he was told to do something. I didn't hear him say, Lord, I can't do it. He went and he heard. He went and he saw. He went and he received a revelation from the Lord as we stand in this place. I want to pray with us on tonight that God will do a work in us. There are so many things, so many distractions. Many times, even when we, we're, we're saved and we're, we're, we're Holy Ghost filled, but sometimes we can come into the house of God and the smallest things seem to perturb us. The smallest things seem to distract us. And we need to say, Lord, I want to be focused on what you have me focused on when he brought jeremiah to the potter's house he caused him to hear something if god is trying to get me to hear one thing but i'm focused on something else am i missing something am i missing what the lord is saying but right now in this word the lord has told us tonight he said arise and go somebody say arise and go he said arise and go Arise and go 
Arise and go. Get up off your bed of affliction. Arise and go. Get up off your do nothing. Arise and go. Get up off your somebody else can do it. Arise and go. Arise and go. He says, Arise and go. Arise. Get up. Stand up. And go where I told you to go. Do what I told you to do. I know it's not conventional. I know it's not traditional. But this is a day. This is the hour when God is calling for the non-traditional. Would you please stand up? God has told us to do something. We've got to stay on the wheel. I remember Mother Green always saying, see what the end is going to be. I believe I'll run on and see what the end is going to be. I believe I'll run on. Is there anybody who's going to run on? Y'all, I'm telling you this thing is for real. A couple of weeks ago, there was a young lady sitting in the sanctuary and and, and, and she came in and she heard the word of the Lord and, and, and she worshiped and uh, pastor, he, he didn't feel led to lay hands, but uh, God told me to do something. And I went and I ministered to the young lady what God said. She was sitting right back here. And, and, and y'all, the next day she had died. The next day she had died. And, and all I could say was, Lord, I thank you because I would be feeling some kind of way had I not been obedient to what you told me to do. We can't shoot anybody to heaven or we can't shoot them to hell. But I know that I know that God spoke to that young woman that day before she left here. And she said that everything that we told her, she received it. It was confirmation of what she had heard. If there is anyone in this house tonight and you know that God is calling you, he's calling you back to the potter's wheel. Come on and jump back on the potter's wheel. Sometimes we get tired, we get frustrated, and we think the church people, sometimes they are pretty critical. Sometimes they're too hard, but get on. Come on, young people, get back on the potter's wheel. Stay there until God does what he wants to do. Many times it's then that our anointing, it steps out once we've gone through that heat. So let's bow our heads right here. God, we just thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for who we represent, God. We thank you for our gifts, our calling, our anointings. There are various anointings in this building. There are various gifts. Many things that we have been blessed to do that many others around us have not yet seen. But God, we choose to be a work in your hands. God, we ask for forgiveness of any sin that we've committed knowingly as well as unknowingly. Somebody needs to say, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. Because sometimes we're saved, but we still need to say, Lord, forgive me. Forgive us of any sin that we've committed knowingly as well as unknowingly. God, if I did something to my sister or brother, if I looked the wrong way, if I acted funny, Lord, forgive me. If I spoke out of turn, Lord, forgive me. God, I want to be a work in your hands. I want to do what you call me to do. So right now in the name of Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus, right now in the name of Jesus, God, I'm calling on all your ministering angels to talk to your people God to minister to them to let them know to stay on the wheel to let them know that you have something designed for their lives God let them know that you're working your work it's not over it's not finished it's not complete but allow you to finish the work they need to allow you to finish the work God we let you in right now in the name of Jesus no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper come on somebody arise and go arise and go arise and do what the Lord has called you to do arise arise come on arise turn your heart to God arise go where he told you to go Go to your family, minister to your family, minister to your family.
your friends. Even more so, minister to your enemies. God had to deal with me. Minister to your enemies. God, help us to minister to all those who come into our past. God, we praise you. We thank you for your work on us. God, we choose to stay on the wheel. Help us impart this word into us deeply. We bind the spirit of the enemy that comes to try to steal this word before it's engrafted in our hearts and in our minds. Thank you for what you've said in Jeremiah 18 verses 1 through 4 to us on tonight, God. We will stay on the wheel. In Jesus' name, we all say amen and amen. Can you put your hands together and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. My soul says yeah. Yeah. Yes, my Lord. My soul says yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. To your will, Lord, yeah. Yeah. wave your hand right there. I surrender all. I surrender all. Oh, I surrender my Just say, Lord, I surrender. I surrender. Oh, Lord, I surrender. Did y'all enjoy that word on tonight? Come on, let's give God a hand, clap of praise for that word. Stay on the potter's wheel. You all may be seated. We're about to leave this place. But I have a brother here, a friend that I've known for many years. And when uh, we were doing the offering, he came up and shared something with me. So at this time, I'm going to ask his brother, Madison, if he would come. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Praise the Lord. I give God all honor and glory for being here tonight. That word, woman of God... I saw everything that was going on because my wife was singing. And all that work, it just stayed on me. It stayed on me. You got to go down there too. I said, okay. We're going to do what you say. But I come here to tell you this. And I'm glad to see things that the Lord reminded me of when I was in prayer about you two today. I'm going to start with your wife, man of God, because she was on me pretty heavy. And the Lord said to me, he's going to give you some daughters. 
some seasoned daughters. I haven't met you for real. We've, we've seen each other in passing like that, but I haven't seen him since we've been out of school for real, for real. We see each other, but to really, really know what's going on in y'all life, you know I don't know. And so the Lord said he was going to send you some, some daughters, some seasoned daughters. So much is coming out of you, and the Lord has heard your cry. And so there's a lot of work that you got to get done. It has nothing to do against what the man of God, because you're a team. But the Lord has a particular work for you. And you know about this particular work. And so I'm coming to tell you that your help is on the way. Lord is using you as a surrogate so you're going to be a mother to these women and they're going to be like wolf to you they're going to be I'm not going to leave I'm not going to do this I'm going to stick around because many are called but few are chosen and there's going to be some that God is going to hand pick to help bear your arms in the work that you that the work isn't easy it's a mighty work. You, the way you sit here and broke this bread of life, the Lord has been waiting. And so you're going to have to pour this thing out because we have to get ready for legacy. And so you're going to have to have some daughters for this. And the Lord's going to bring these daughters in. There's nothing against who's in the church, who's not here, who's been here, what they did or how they did it. But these are particular daughters for a particular work that's going to push you into a new place. Elevation is on you both. And so God is expanding you just like the clay. <laughs> He's expanding you reason why he's expanding you is because the oil from yesterday won't do. There's coming a fresher oil. This is your hour of visitation. You've already been there. And with this hour of visitation, God is doing some new things in you. And it stemmed all from being in the secret place. You know, at three in the morning when nobody's up, when God puts sleep on everybody and he says come here come into my bosom come into the secret place those things are wrote out to you because that is the plan of the Lord and in this plan your obedience your yes is so potent and so look don't matter what it look like work is so heavy, woman of God, that is a necessity. God's going to change the face of everything that you have put your hands on. But you got to have some disciples. <laughs> and that's what the Lord has he's been preparing you for this. So what you just preached... <laughs> Man of God, 
I got to tell you this. And I don't know if I can say it over the mic like I really want to say it. Because that's what seasoned people do. And this is really because I can't uncover you in your own house. But I'm going to tell you this. Because this is stem with what I got to say. The Lord is going to increase you. The same expansion because you are. It's already in the works. The Lord has been putting a strategic plan on you. And the things that God has been doing in you, it seem a little different. And you need help too. But you, your help ain't from, <laughs> it ain't from them. Your help is from above. <laughs> Let me say it.
as we release this thing unto you, God, we stand in a place of agreement. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there's life, and there's life more abundantly. But when two or three come together, that's when you come in the midst. And so as this word has been spoken, has been put into the atmosphere, God, I ask right now, God, that you line up everything, make every road conducive in the name of Jesus. God for sending the angels the same angels that's assigned to this house to make the crooked way straight and the rough places smooth I speak to the people on your behalf and I say come now this dwelling in the name of Jesus I speak to these people in passing that the angels begin to lead them to this in the name of Jesus, or near your pathway, so that they will know what they have asked for is in you. And that the Lord increase and expand you and pour in a pressure oil, a pressure anointing, so that you can lead these people to the place God told you to lead them. In the name of Jesus. That God expand your territory and bless you indeed in the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Lord God, as you begin this newness in them, as you begin this new place in them, as you begin this new thing, this thing that hasn't been seen, eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard, seen that hasn't been seen. with your spirit so when these people come they will feel at home in the name of Jesus thank you God your neighbor and say better, 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 better. Just look at that other neighbor on the other side. Just say better, just better. And we prepare to leave this place. That's your word, better. Even if it's bad, look for better. If it's good, look for better. Even if it's great, look for better. Look at one more neighbor and say better, 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 better. We give God glory on and praise. We thank God for uh, the under shepherd of this house, Pastor M.L. Clay.
Put your hands together for him. Thank God for him. And this amazing word by Dr. Clay, thank you so much. Stay on the potter's wheel. Stay on the wheel. Thank God for Pastor Cooper. Uh, thank God for Minister Madison and all of you, the people of God. Mr. Coleman, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. We give God the glory on him and praise. We're going to prepare to go uh, tonight, but I want everybody to just stand. Everybody to stand. Everybody to stand. We give God glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. Uh, I want you to take that with you better. Better. The Lord has heard our cries. And he has released better. And we give God glory. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. God, we thank you tonight for better. We thank you, God, that every word that we have spoken, you have heard. We thank you, God, that every tear that we have cried, you have captured. We thank you, God, that you have released better into our lives. So, God, that even as we leave this place, but never your presence, God, we're expecting when we get home that we're going to run right into better. God, we're going to look at our bank accounts and we're going to see better. And our relationships in our children, we're going to see better. And we thank you for what you're doing in this house, anointed praise and worship ministry, church of God in Christ. We thank you, God, that this is the year of promotion. We thank you for inheritance is released, promotions on our jobs. We thank you for bonuses we did not expect. We thank you for prosperity in the lives of your people. We thank you that we are the lenders and not the borrowers. That we are the head and not the tail. And we thank you now for strength and peace that surpasses all understanding. We pray right now, God, as we leave this place, but never your presence. We pray, God, that you will bless us in going as you have in coming. And we give your name glory, honor, and praise. And we believe you right now, and it is so, and not otherwise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just tell your neighbor you love them. Tell them you love them.